you're going to do, uh, I assume, Dr. Golden, today, general historical stuff on the origins of group practice. Am I? I'm going you to do a that? general historical, going back of your writings, to why was the minor isolated, and why was he the kind of an individual that he became mm -hmm. as a unit. Mm -hmm unmercifully slavery mm -hmm. if you will yeah. for want of a better word i'll not use that yeah. oh. right now we're in the how privacy talking to yes. each other here and with doctors there because you they'll see, want to see how you pick up and nobody, what you did in medical nobody care. has brought up the genesis mm -hmm. of the foreigner in the mines of west virginia right. or any place else yeah. And the genesis is, he was brought over in steerage. Yeah. And the minute he earned on the streets of gold in yeah. his country, yeah. the minute he could pay back his steerage and pay the company store, then he could bring his family because he came from that era, mm -hmm. area of Europe where families were a cemented unit Right. They all live for their family. Now, no one has gone into that phase of it. That's very important. Every town in West Virginia was at a railhead. Why? Because the industry was heavy minerals or lumber. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the railhead went in, mm -hmm. and then the town was built. And then they brought the this foreigners is excellent. In. Now, you're going, and I know you don't need the notes because yeah. this you carry in your head. And this is very good, and it will go over so well. So this is a new approach but, that you all have not. Uh, no, and may out. I ask, could you and will you deal? Because I regard you, and aside from being a social philosopher and observer, as being the most prominent, you know, medical group leader in the sense that the earlier, you correct me if I'm wrong, group practices that arose in southern West Virginia were almost all company instigated rather than medically instigated. Yes. When you decided to go, I hope you're going to deal with that, what your goals were and well, how you expanded it, you know. I'm going to bring up and we'll quit mm -hmm. at a differential of three types of okay. group practice, uh -huh. which I think in my mind after studying groups mm -hmm. before I founded this group. Yeah. What part the Chekhov played in 90% of the hospital developments of the state, mm -hmm. good, bad, and indifferent. Mm -hmm. And this will be long enough. Yeah. This is where I end this right. unedited piece, and if they all want it, I'll have copies made. Right. It. Now, Leave it at that. Then they can ask yeah. me questions. You, you don't mind answering questions no, no. about I, I the later developments to. as you conceived of them, the expansion I want to into other areas. It will help me in my memoirs. Okay. Now, getting back, mm -hmm. the first thing my father did, according to Abe Lilly, this I This was Abe before. Lilly, was the attorney yeah, in the who, Charleston a court. A famous man yeah. in the state. Abe you Lilly. described him as Lincoln esque. Huh? That's right, mm -hmm. Tall. Abe Lilly was, uh, yeah. he was the law of West Virginia. Yeah. It seems that Dad worked these things out, could get no one to help him legally. Yes, he couldn't afford it. Mm -hmm. And he walked into Abe Lilly's office, and Abe Lilly was so thrilled. Out came the drinking cup, tin can, mm -hmm. in the trains. That mm -hmm. was the first thing my father backed. The second thing was to get the doctors to take a license. Mm -hmm. This way, now the, when your father was, was the head of the medical association, or was he doing he, this even earlier? He was doing it earlier. Yeah. Then he became secretary of the medical association. This might have been even before 1900 or in the. No, he, this was about 1907, I guess, mm -hmm. six or seven. He wanted he drinking cups on the trains he first. He took those out. Yeah. The then he got the membership, he doubled the membership of the State mm -hmm. Medical Society. Then he was elected president. Mm -hmm. Then he wrote the state compensation laws. Ah. He's the father of the state compensation laws. 
was he greatly influenced, like by the Monongah explosion, which historically was, you know, being oh, the well, worst coal disaster? Later. But that was 1907. Was yeah. he earlier trying to get compensation? Yes, he was earlier trying. Like in the Wisconsin case. He was, was, he was trying from the day he landed in West Virginia. Mm -hmm. Senator Davis and Senator Elkins lived in Elkins. Right. And they took him as their family doctor. Mm -hmm. That gave him a little... Was he a family physician, a GP, in a sense that we would describe it he today? Was or was until he was until 1901. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When they, he got the Davises to build the Davis Memorial Hospital. It took five doctors to take over his private practice. He Davis went, Memorial Hospital, they named after Senator Davis, is after that correct? After Mrs. Davis. Mrs. Davis, yeah. okay. Then he went once a month for a week mm -hmm. to Hopkins for over a year mm -hmm. and did residency in surgery. Mm -hmm. This was offset. unprecedented in these yes. early years. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. He's, he then was the father of the drinking cup. He mm -hmm. helped organize and push the tuberculosis association. Mm -hmm. He helped develop the compensation Laws. Now you think he was right working and drafting those laws yeah. before Monongo as far as yes. Okay. Then he was formulating a public health department of the state. Yeah. And built helped build that up. This man Lilly apparently mm -hmm. got so enthusiastic that he did these things without charge and was the politician to push them through. I see. Dad was not a politician. Yeah. He was blunt. Mm -hmm. Hell, if you couldn't understand why you didn't have a drinking cup, why should I waste time with you, you yeah. see? Mm -hmm. But Abe Lilly was a smart, mm -hmm. and if you will get into the history of Abe Lilly, That's very you will yeah. find he was one of the most powerful. Mm -hmm. And the Lilly family, I think, yeah. is You're still several known around. They also. have a uh, an annual union mm -hmm. in which there's several thousand attend mm -hmm. each summer. Mm -hmm. Was he, was Abe Lilly more than lawyer? Was he a state senator or was he anything that know. you know at that point? I never okay. had, uh, never. Uh, my yeah. job was 36 yeah. hours a day. Yeah. When? 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 Run a hospital. Sure. Give, when let me just, I know you may not go into this, but yeah. when you went to medical school at Temple. At Temple. Yeah. And then did you return after training to Elkins? That's right. Where What, what was your training in, Doctor? My Go training on. was general. Mm -hmm. Then I came back and spent seven years at my father's table in surgery. In Elkins at yes. Davis Memorial. At, at the point. Davis Memorial. Mm -hmm. He died in 29. What would those seven years have been, roughly? They were murder. Yeah. 22 to 29. Mm -hmm. And they were murder. He didn't, because I was his son, I yeah. was treated worse than the family. <laughs> Did you have any brothers or No, I had a sister. Yeah. I have a sister mm -hmm. <coughs> who's Still alive. married mm -hmm. to associate professor of medicine at Hopkins. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes, Dr. Paulson, who's just put out mm -hmm. the most modern mm -hmm. internal medical mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. book that's mm -hmm. marketed. It's yeah. on the market mm -hmm. now. It's damn things. Paulson at the... Paulson. He's Hopkins. one of the international known yeah. internists of the country. So your almost moves towards group practice coincided. You'd been thinking about it latently all that period <coughs> as your father died. It seems to me I remember the historically the growth starts around 29 and 30. And your first move started moves. in 1930. Mm -hmm. The checkoff, as far as I was concerned, mm -hmm. started in 1923. With what? With Davis Memorial or with you all with as doctors? Me, with How do you mean? Me. Mm -hmm. How do you explain that? The southern end of the state had a check off. Right. In 1929, we had a crash. Right. We had a lot of tremendous business on paper prior to 29. Mm -hmm. But as the men came back from the service, it was evident that medicine was in a tremendous change from shotgun prescriptions, yeah. from pills and powders. In the powders. 1920s now, okay. Yeah. All right. In the war, the first time intravenous was really used. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Prior to that, it was rectal feeding. Mm -hmm. The intravenous and the saline mm -hmm. was used in every bed mm -hmm. in the war zones mm -hmm. until they drowned the patients. In fact, George Crowell came back and the first lecture I heard as a student, when he stated that we were drowning and killing our patients mm -hmm. with intravenous fluids, mm -hmm. we had to wake up. Almost today, it's antibiotics and blood transfusions. <laughs> it's standard. You've seen, isn't it? Yeah, it's really huh? an interesting. Yes, it is. Thing, it's interesting. Very interesting. So this is. Yeah. <coughs> So uh, did, did you go visit places like shelter? And did you make up your own mind about some of those? Uh, I knew that I could not. Mm -hmm. I wasn't a mental giant. I wasn't yeah. a student. Yeah. I was a fair mechanic. Mm -hmm. If I do say it myself, I eventually became a good surgeon. I think mm -hmm. I have the right to say that. Because I've appeared on every platform that American College of Surgeons and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. You didn't do that by just doing. Right. Uh, I went to Mayo Clinic for two reasons. One, to see what they were doing in medicine, and one, to find out what they were doing as group practice. In the 20s you did that. In the oh. 20s. Mm -hmm. I went to... Do, would you remember meeting Mr. Lobb, the administrator, who was there with Charlie and... Will, he was the first administrator and went on the University of Minnesota, and he lives here in retirement in Fairmont now. He was the first administrator of yes, Mayo I Clinic. I, no, I have a He's vague, about uh, 86 uh, years old, a very yeah. distinguished, uh, yes. pleasant gentleman. Mm -hmm. But to Mayo yeah. Clinic, I couldn't mm -hmm. find out anything. Right. They don't let no, you have no. anything. <laughs> Then I went over to Wheeling, to Fulton, who was developing the Wheeling Clinic. Now, when I didn't realize that. The Wheeling Clinic was founded about... About 25. Yeah. By Dr. Fulton? As By Dr. Dr. Fulton. What was he, a, spa, a, a surgeon? He was or? a surgeon. Fulton was mm -hmm. married Mrs. Fulton, who had owned 51% of, of the stock of Wheeling Steel. Mm -hmm. But he wanted to play in medicine, mm -hmm. and he wanted to go on safaris with... Teddy Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. He was a hell of a good fellow, but mm -hmm. he liked me. Mm -hmm. I was fortunate. Mm -hmm. These people liked me. Yeah. And always when I went, opened the doors. Mm -hmm. Then I went back to Temple, which was undergoing reorganization. The fact mm -hmm. is, while I was still a resident there, they sent me to New York to mm -hmm. study hospitals. Mm -hmm. I went to Sinai, mm -hmm. lying in, and hip Did joint. you have a formal surgical residency no, at Temple? No, not as such. Yeah, right. I had it under my father, right. who was a one of the founders. Right. He was mm -hmm. the founder of the American College of Surgeons. Right. Mm -hmm. So that <clears throat> every place I went, I tried to find out something about group practice. Well, most of the places you went was the hell with hands off. No information. Yeah. No, oh, I see. No. They were opposed to it. Yeah. Oh, my. Mm -hmm. And so opposed, my yeah. friend, that I was up for dismissal from the American Medical Association. I've been up for dismissal from the State Medical Association. I've heard this about I've the been up for dismissal yeah. from the American College of Surgeons. Was it the prepayment part or just the group part or in combination? That combination of all of it. In combination. Was they you, were you familiar with the Committee on the Costs of Medical Care that came out with a 1931 report advocating group practice and Rufus Roram's work of that yes. period? Yeah. But you see, mm -hmm. I'm unfortunately a blunt person. Mm -hmm. It's been my handicap. I inherited it. As my father said, if you're a gentleman, why in the hell should I congratulate you? We raised you that way. It's when you're not a gentleman, I'll tell you. And he did. Mm -hmm. So I quickly ran headlong into Morris Fishbein. Oh, I see. Yeah. See. He was still. He was editor at that he time. He was editor. He was the AMA. In the 1930s, he was sort he, of. The, that's when the AMA yeah. was the against big, everything. Anything. Steeped in yeah. backwardness. Because okay. these mm -hmm. men. 
mm-hmm. were solo practitioners mm-hmm. and they were going to hang on. Mm-hmm. The college was in the hands of Martin, mm-hmm. influenced by the Mayos, mm-hmm. and they wanted no change. Mm-hmm. You're speaking of the American College of Surgeons That's as right. well as the AMA. That's right. Okay. So that I was in that complex, mm-hmm. and unfortunately for them, mm-hmm. when I went to New York or to Pittsburgh or mm-hmm. here or there, yeah. the men would cry on my shoulders, and I knew the politics. Mm-hmm. I was an honorary member of the Allegheny County Medical Society of Pittsburgh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was for a year or two the honorary member of Harrison County mm-hmm. Medical Society when they kicked me out of my own medical society. <laughs> you see? Yeah. All I've done has been kicked out of this that But the other this place. occurred in the early 30s as a result of your founding Golden Clinic and having prepayment contracts pre-payment with coal miners. Right. That's what That's really right. brought it yeah. to a crux. Yes. <clears throat> they actually brought you up on charges in the State Medical Association? Yes. Mm-hmm. Which I knew nothing about until it was published in the State Journal. Yeah, I believe I I've read. Some, I mean, you know, that, yeah. that's where I picked up the track yeah. of how, what, why you had, you must have founded it about twenty years. I saw it in the 30. State Journal, <laughs> and I called for a meeting of their yeah. board. Yeah. Well, of course, at that and stage, the AMA they, was opposed to Blue Cross and Blue Shield. They were opposed to oh, anything, yes, weren't yes. they? And, and it was a tough. Period. But there was a coincidentally, other mm-hmm. things were happening. Mm-hmm. Thirty-two. Mm-hmm. The government wanted to underwrite the medical costs of the farmer mm-hmm. in his total depression. Mm-hmm. And they were trying to get the banks involved. Mm-hmm. They came to me, Mott, mm-hmm. who developed the Detroit Medical Oh, stuff. Fred Mott, in yes. his rural studies, yeah. Right. He, d- he first was a rural study man. That's right. right. I remember Fred that, Mott yeah. came into my office. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In 1932, trying to do something for farmers That's before right. the federal government uh, formed but the labor they agency. had nothing yeah. to offer banks, mm-hmm. and the banks were local. And they weren't going to tie their neck up yeah. to the doctors from the community mm-hmm. if it wasn't popular. Mm-hmm. So I made my own Blue Cross. Yeah. In 1931, I think, I was president of the Hospital Association of West Virginia. Was this because you were what, administrator of Davis? What was your title at Davis Memorial that gave you? Superintendent Surgeon in Charge. And perhaps what year were you appointed to that? Was it earlier while your father was alive or on his no, death? At, on yeah. his death. He had been the superintendent in that's charge? Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's what they called him yeah. that. We didn't have mm-hmm. the word administrator. Right. Mm-hmm. So Fred gave me an idea of taking in more than minors. Yeah. Well, I had to hire somebody. Yeah. to go to the farmer mm-hmm. and tell him what he could yeah. do. Now this then is the I depth of the Depression, am I yeah, right? And he's coming to you absolutely. saying 33 right at the bottom and right saying the, the government bottom. wants yeah. to do something. Okay. So then I was accused of advertising my wares yeah. because I had a man mm-hmm. soliciting yeah. prepayment contracts. Pre-payment contracts. Yeah. Could I ask you about those a minute? First, how much a month did the coal miner contracts, what did, was the rate? A dollar a month, and what did it cover, say, in 1929 and 30? It covered the man and his family, <coughs> dependent children? His man, his dependent children, mm-hmm. any Spouse. relatives mm-hmm. of the family who lived under the same roof. And were dependent on him, that type of... Well, we call that dependent. We had yeah. no other way of knowing right. what dependency meant. Very good, interesting, See? yeah. You defined it as living under the same roof. That's right. And then that... Then what did they get? A they certain number of days total, at Davis Memorial? No, they got total mel- medical coverage, period. Including hospital care? Yes. Okay. With one mm-hmm. exception. Mm-hmm. No, they're picking up out there unless I have With to one exception. Care. We didn't treat venereal disease. Yeah. And we did not treat trauma incident to law breaking. Yeah, right. These were sort of carryovers as I've studied them of the old coal miner prepayments in the southern part of the state had language like this for yeah. exclusions. Can I check this? Mm-hmm.
Don't let me interfere. This is a fascinating, not at all, no, this is a fascinating account and uh, anything uh, any of us can do that believe in history and love it to encourage you to do your memoirs. Uh, well, Dr. Golden. I hope God will let me live long enough. You know, there's an old saying, a man can never be a prophet in his home community, so we, we <laughs> must know that you're a prophet. You're more than 50 miles from home, so over here we regard you as a prophet. <laughs> I've learned that, you know, around here I can be an SOB at times, <laughs> but if I get away at this. Well, yes. you know what's happened to me. I was kicked out. Mm -hmm. Totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Forgive the interruption. The, uh, All right. I, there, there is something, if they don't mind me backing you up, the group's not going to be interested like I am, you know, in every detail of the thing. I have done research what I in... To do, what I yeah. thought mm -hmm. I would do, I ask mm -hmm. your opinion, mm -hmm. is to give this genesis. Go into it a little more in detail, because you have some foreign doctors don't you? Some, yeah, right. But we, the, the younger Ameri the majority who are younger Americans still don't know. They think the battles we had to get started here for 15 years, That's they were kept I, out of the society. They think sort of it's, it's different. It never happened before. It must have done, been some er error in tactics. Well, part of the story mm -hmm. is that one reason my father mm -hmm. became so endeared to the minor. Mm -hmm was he quickly learned that the only thing he knew was goddamn and son of a bitch. <laughs> that was the only English. But my father learned enough of his language. He became a multilinguist to Is take histories. Right? Did he? Is that right? yeah. yeah, he made it. What, what were the, uh, what are we speaking of? Were you dealing with Slavic Italian, and Italian, yeah. and Poles, uh, yeah. all the uh, variety of That's Eastern right. Europe, Southern That's European. Right. Now, at that time, they were extremely heavy in the mines, say, from Galloway on to Southern Randolph and on to... That's right. Was Webster Springs opened up in those years? No, yet, not to that extent. But Randolph was a Rand big, oh, yes. right around Elkins. Yeah, at one lot. time, we had at Norton, I think, about 1,800 or yeah. 2,000 employees. And Junior, all those places were yes, big in those years. Yes, that was all one yeah. continuous yeah. field. And you had around mm -hmm. 2,000 at uh, Flemington and yeah. Galloway. And they came over your way. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I got them to sign a contract on Christmas Eve, 1930. Christmas Eve, 1930. When you say them, are you speaking of the Norton Galloway. group or which group? Galloway, Galloway yeah. which was about how many people? About uh, mm -hmm. 1,800, 2,000 miles. Yeah. About 5,000 people. Now, what was the state? You know, the Union went through so many destructive states in the 20s, self-destructive. Yes. You yes. talk about today, the people that don't know history think that Miners battling each other and shooting each other, something new. The, uh, right. the 20s here were like a nightmare. I mean, Van oh, yeah. Bittner was in charge and a rank and file was in revolt. And, you uh, had uh, machine guns on the hillsides. Yeah. Aside view. from the companies, I mean, the men they, were the uh, battling themselves in yes. the 20s. And the National Miners Union, a communist outfit came in. There was the, everything here. The unions were trying to find out which union was the best, and they were quarreling. Now yeah. you hear a man walking out because he can't pick up an electric plug and they have an interunion fight and they strike and the <laughs> company's closed down. Well, this was done in confusion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These poor devils realized that they were being offered something. Yes. But what were they being offered? Mm -hmm. They couldn't do anything because he came into the office and he mm -hmm. said, I need some food. Mm -hmm. So you gave him an order, you looked at his time, he had seven dollars coming to him. So you were a good guy, you gave him an order for seven dollars and a half. Yeah. So he owed you fifty cents on the next payroll. Yeah. He couldn't leave. Yeah. You made serfs out of them. Uh, out they of were just, serfs. Yeah, right. They yeah. were serfs, yeah. one hundred percent. Yeah. See? Now, w the companies would agree to payroll deduction. That was standard. Oh, no. Or did you have to fight that out? Say, Christmas Eve, who were you meeting with? The men and right. the company? Inside the room yeah. here, let me show you. This is Christmas Eve at Galloway. Who's yeah. the employer? Do you remember? Uh, would it be Galloway Land Company? Who would be down in that area at that time? I, I think it was the Galloway Coal Company. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure. For about how, how many men? About 1,800. Mm -hmm. Okay. But let me show you what the tricks. Yeah. This is you present on medical care 
The rank and file miners, some of them are there, and management is in the room? No, management was never in the room. Okay, you're dealing with the men. Never okay. dealt with management. Okay. Always the union. All right. Uh, it was their dollar. Right. And they nothing, were organized I had nothing, at that time. They were organized. All right, okay. <clears throat> I had nothing against management. No. But there was no place for management in this picture. Yeah, it was the men's dollar and the men's representative. But they were interested. Mm -hmm. What are we going to get out of mm -hmm. it? Now, Hugh Myers and his mm -hmm. group gave Galloway free compensation for the contract. Earlier, prior to that, when no, you went into that after I got it established, after I they saw what it was, right. they offered free. Right. Up to then, the and Philippi the, group and, had not gone in for prepayment. No, okay. they had not, because up to then... But tell me about those negotiations yeah. that led up to the signing on Christmas Eve, 1930. What, well... <coughs> was I mean, price the issue? Was service issues discussed? Uh, we did not go into any camp that mm -hmm. didn't have a doctor. All that right. was one of the prerequisites. All they right. must have a company doctor. You remember who was there? They had a company doctor there? Mm, I don't remember. But somebody lived right in Galloway. Oh, yes. Every one, every one to of him. these towns had a company uh, they doctor. They checked off to him for his care. That's right. My father in, indirectly mm -hmm. started that in the north, and it was rampant oh, in the, it was southern, old, end the southern end of the state. state right. And you see, the southern end of the state was developing in a quite different way. You had Hatfield, yeah. who had his own hospital in Huntington, and he became governor. Yeah. Tell you a little story, yeah. which will help you mm -hmm. generate a yes. simplification mm -hmm. of this thing. Hatfield, of course, was fighting his solo men, the general men around. And he got somebody to introduce a law. I do not know the contents of the law. But we had a Dr. Hull from Durban who worshipped the ground my father walked on. Where was he located? In Durban. What county? Would, where would that be? Pocahontas. Pocahontas, yeah. Mm -hmm. When this law came up, uh, Hull was chairman of whatever committee this mm -hmm. was supposed yeah. to go through the mouth. He came to Elkins on Friday night to see Dad mm -hmm. and get his opinion on the law. Mm -hmm. My father was a politician behind the scene, yeah. never, never out in the open. Right. Well, he showed Hull what Hatfield, if Hatfield had gotten this law passed, Hatfield would have had total control of all the medicine from Huntington South, mm -hmm. that whole area, control yeah. of hospitals and everything. So Hat. Uh, this oh, was this like pre-World War One in that early That's era. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hat, uh, Hull told this story. He got back on Sunday night mm -hmm. to Charleston. And about 5 o'clock, between 5 and 6 in the morning, somebody knocked on his door. Come on in. Mm -hmm. Hull was a 6 foot 6 or 7. Mm -hmm. He was knowledgeable of his height and embarrassed him so he dressed loudly he talked loudly but inside had a heart as big as a body mm -hmm. and it was the governor Hatfield mm -hmm. he sat up in bed he said good morning governor fine Hall. how are you George mm -hmm. fine what brings you here so early you mind if I sit on the bed no mm -hmm. sit on the bed Tell me what you're thinking. George, I want you to bring that bill out this morning. I think I've got everything set that it'll go right through the legislative mm -hmm. body. Hull says, I looked at him, and he said, you know, Hatfield liked to boast about his surgery and his mm -hmm. ability. And I said, Hatfield, you've done some obstetrics, haven't you? Oh, yes, yes, mm -hmm. I've delivered thousands of women. Mm -hmm. Well, in that delivery, did you ever have any miscarriages? Yes, I've had a few. Well, God damn you, son of a bitch, that's where your bill is right now. 
Now, was Hull in the legislature? Yeah, Hull was in the legislature. Yeah. Both and, and as far as you know, this was some kind of legislation that, that would have tied given. up the prepayment in southern West Virginia that's right correct. into Hatfield and his that's hospital right. in Huntington. That's right. Yeah. What was the name of his ho hospital? I didn't know he had one down there. I knew he was a uh, coal company doctor, I, I you know, at contracts. I can't tell you. Okay. I can't tell you. That's all right. I, I just oh, thought man, some of this. I know all yeah. man, I can't tell you. Some of these yeah. things I'm going to have to go back and try. Well, this is really that. interesting. Did you get to know Laird well, or was he more a contemporary of your father's? Laird took his board under my father. Yes. Laird would have committed murder for my father. Mm -hmm. And without my knowledge, mm -hmm. was probably one of the best friends I ever had. When you, Myers, tried to knife me, when the Board of Surgery was formed, you, Myers, wrote a letter. So I was told in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. I didn't know it. But Laird found out about mm -hmm. it. And you tried to use Laird. Laird was an influence in the state. Mm -hmm. John Kennedy, of course, was the senior surgeon of the state. Where was he located? Charleston General. Yes. He founded the Charleston yes. General. And Laird, when the college was putting me out. This was in the 1930s over this issue? The college or? was in 19... Oh, I would say 1948, maybe 49. They were still after you? Oh, time. yes. Yeah. You see, I helped found the International College of Surgeons. Yes. Which was entirely a different organization yes. to start with than it is now. It's merely a surgical organization. Mm -hmm. Its original idea was that it would take in biochemists mm -hmm. and anatomists. Mm -hmm of the world. Mm -hmm. We would limit it to a thousand membership. Mm -hmm. We would have no real papers, excuse me. Sure. We'd have no real papers. All seminar meetings. Yeah. Of all the adjunct yeah. medical phases mm -hmm. of medicine. When Acuff down in Knoxville, the other Knox, Acuff went yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well Acuff I got into the college. I got him interested in the college. And he was a Rotarian mentally, so they had to go out for numbers. Yeah. At that time, I was treasurer of the United States chapter. When mm -hmm. this happened, I... Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, when it became that... The, the ACS was viewing this as a dual organization or something right. that ought to be... Well, and, and Max the Thorak was in the thing and tied into it, and he was at odds and fighting the uh, a, the college because yeah. he was turned down yeah. after his famous monkey clan transfer mm -hmm. for Buffalo Bill and all the publicity. They wouldn't take him in. So I innocently got into something I didn't mean to get yeah. into. That was another... But Hugh Myers was doing this more out of competition or something oh, uh, sure. than uh, any whole damn thing issue. Is, yes. yeah, whole damn. And Hugh could hide behind the church and all of that. Yeah. And I, mm -hmm. I was interested in medicine. You mm -hmm. see, Hugh Myers, mm -hmm. the Myers boys, inherited a substantial inheritance from patent medicine. Sure. Well, you still have those bottles around someplace. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm mother kept on the business mm -hmm. and they wouldn't take Hugh and his brother into the state society mm -hmm. they don't know it and never will mm -hmm. how much I went to bat for them mm -hmm. we finally took them in they treated him like herbists or something because of yeah. the father yeah. Yeah. Herbalist, yeah finally took mm -hmm. him in incidentally the old man was a very fine old man yeah and the story of the patent medicine mm -hmm didn't start out to be patent medicine at all. It started to be service to these people you couldn't get to at 3 a.m. Right. Yeah. It grew into something that the old doctor didn't mean for it, but when it became monetary, yeah, that's the way it goes. Yeah, that's the way right. it goes, yes. So, <coughs> uh, then you see how to build a group practice 
None of the local men would go in with me. That was the first jolt I got. Mm -hmm. I didn't want that. You I approached just them in oh, yeah. 1929, right after your father's death? Yes. You started. I realized I couldn't do it alone. So I had my choice. Mm -hmm. I was offered to Temple to go back as administrator mm -hmm. to Temple University Medical yes. School. Mm -hmm. I was offered to Temple to go back in the surgical service. Mm -hmm. These were the two immediate things. Yes. And here I was, tied up. Had the depression hit, or was this a little earlier when your father died? No, dad died on the 14th of October, and the depression hit on the 29th of October. Pretty fast, yeah. So that, uh, and I had bought a home. Mm -hmm. My father mm -hmm. was at the point of deciding that between the two of us, why don't we just open a suite of offices and do mm -hmm. surgery? Mm -hmm. Even had looked at offices yeah. and plans. Yeah. And then he died, and I was caught. How old were you then? Oh, roughly. 31 mm -hmm. or okay. two. Yeah. See, I'll be 80 this September. Is that right? Oh, yeah. I wouldn't believe that. But. So, mm -hmm. I had to go out. And I had no money, and I couldn't promise anything. I didn't mm -hmm. know what was going to happen. Who in the hell did? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Half the doctors of Boston were running streetcars to try and make a yeah. living. Mm -hmm. Well, in a sense, I was lucky. I got one young man, Vic Conrad. But nobody right from Elkins. You had to import your doctors to start. I had to, to import everybody. Did you put them right into Davis Memorial? or? Yeah, we, you we, just, we just fitted out offices there. Mm -hmm. uh, the Davis Memorial was just uh, grew. Senator Davis didn't need any laws that he wanted in the state of West Virginia. <laughs> in 36, I got the family to organize a board. I traveled at my expense to the this members the of the Davis Memorial Hospital yeah, Board. Board. Okay. I got. We had no board up till that right. time. Mm -hmm. In effect, you ran it as superintendent and reported to Senator Davis? Uh, no report to nobody. Okay. <laughs> and during the 30s. Yeah. How about the payment? I, I want to finish up. You said y your father had earlier brought into northern West Virginia the idea of the camp doctor from southern West Virginia to supplement. In other words, you wouldn't go into prepayment for medical, surgical, and no, hospital care unless there was a unless there was a that camp was doctor. My, no, that was my that stipulation. Was your okay. There were no contracts while my father was alive. But your father, you said, did believe that the camps ought to have their own GPs out there so that he could That's remain right. a surgeon and That's a specialist right. at the hospital. That's right. Okay. And now, what would you say, what would in Galloway, what would they be paying check off for just the camp doctor when you were getting a dollar? Two dollars. They'd pay him two dollars a month for the whole family? Mm -hmm. And with another dollar, where you would add on the hospital. That's end. right. And then he had to refer in. Was that was a stipulation? Theoretically, that's mm -hmm. was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. That was where another thing happened. Mm -hmm. He found that if he didn't want to get out of his chair, I'll send you up to the hospital. They'll take care of you without looking at him. Yeah. And that was really the firming up of the clinic. We were doing as many as 100 to 150 outpatients visits a day yeah that yeah before this thing blew up before the fun came in yeah right we were seeing 150 even but up to by now you're talking about the 40s that it built yes. that. yeah and uh how many contracts say in the early you're not talking about almost uh before the big section 7a nra and the big umw explosion say in 1930 31 did you have any contracts besides galloway how many did you develop Norton. in those? Norton? Norton. I had probably three or four. That was and four. how many people do you think you were covering at this uh, uh, dollar at a month? At one time, we figured we were covering 12,000 people. That's not later. That's in this very early period or later at when you... At the peak of our... But that came later with transportation yes, and everything. Yes, yes. In the early period, it was less probably, just holding together in the yes, depression. Yes, that's right. Okay. And in the early period, the local doctor was doing more. Right. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, 
there was a development going on within the union. They had their gripes. Mm -hmm. I used to attend union meetings. Grievance sessions. Seven no. days a week. Is that right? Nights. Get home at two o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. This was all over that country all during the that. 30s and 40s. That's right. You continued this way. Mm -hmm. uh, then we organized a medical committee within the union. Yeah. And they would come in with their gripes. So right. I always had an hour to an hour and a half to give each day to a griping medical committee. Yeah. What were their grievances, as you recall them now? What types the of things? The doctor didn't speak right. I went home and I was sick in bed for two weeks and you didn't keep me. Yeah. This is after you had a group, the kind That's of things right. they were yeah. arguing about. That's okay. right. Let me go back now. You, you recruited your first man in 1930? Brought him in. Yes. What was he, a GP or do you remember? High ear, nose, and throat. High ear, nose, and throat. No, no. Who was your first? Yeah. Go the ahead. first man mm -hmm. was Pick Condry. Pick Condry, yeah. really? Yeah. Condry. Yeah. He came while Dad was still alive. He came yeah. with us in 28, I guess. And you're not speaking of Condry the dentist? Uh, no, his the, brother. His brother, yeah, yeah. okay. The cardiologist. Uh, a cardiologist came with him. Huh? Yeah, well, he wasn't 29. a cardiologist then. Yeah. He came, and uh, Pick wasn't uh, Pick's lazy, mm -hmm. but he was a help, mm -hmm. and he didn't care much whether it was group practice or what it okay. was. He was getting his money. These yeah. men came in on a salary. You did set the principle of salary, right? To begin. Yeah. Okay. Then who did you hire next in third? The next was an eye, ear, nose, and throat man. Who was he? T. Martin Goodwin. Oh, yeah. He dropped dead at the Academy at meeting in Chicago in yeah. 59. Mm -hmm. Tom came in from Brooklyn, Pioneer. Mm -hmm. I didn't know he was coming, knew nothing about him. Mm -hmm. Man walks into the office, 2 o'clock, come in on the way. These were the Depression train. days, right? <laughs> yeah. Left his wife and baby sitting in the station. He said, you want an eye, ear, nose, and throat man. I had interviewed one yeah. from Brooklyn before right. that. He went back and told the yes, boys. Right. But he used mm -hmm. me sure. because he was offered a professorship mm -hmm. and he would leave Brooklyn if they right. didn't do it. Well, they did it, of course. But he passed the word to Goodwin. Yeah, I had plenty of that <laughs> in my days. Tell me of the Depression, just for the flavor of today. What would the salary, what would you start at? $300. Three hundred dollars a month for an eye, ear, nose, and that was good money in those days. For everybody, we everybody. all got you the same. Equal salary. Okay. I got the yeah. same. Right. There was no differentiation. Right. We all got the same right. salary. Okay. And that I'll speak very sharply yeah. on today. Yeah, I want to. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm, I'm very. Okay. Yeah. Regardless of uh, you know, of, uh, I think you want to speak candidly about anything. Today. I am mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. positive about this mm -hmm. money business in our modern medicine. Okay. We've got two types of doctors, but they're not being two types of doctors. We have the bedside and the research, and they want to be both. Mm -hmm. And they want big incomes mm -hmm. to pay the government, most of them, mm -hmm. instead of protecting their interests. Mm -hmm. And I'll show them okay. the Jackson you Clinic, speak. the Bear Clinic. Yeah. See, you I got to be known throughout. Money making instead of. Uh, I got to be known throughout the United States, one way or another. Mm -hmm. I said people were good to me. Mm -hmm. You see, who did you get after the eye, ear, nose, and throat? I'm trying to see the creation of your, you were the founder of Golden Clinic. How long was it? In 30 then, you only had three men. You. That's right. And uh, then the got, internist and the car. assistant surgeon. He didn't come in though till maybe 31 two, or 32. 32 or 33. Uh, another surgeon. Who was he? Yeah, I don't remember. All right. Those are things. That Those were the early years, up, right? Or not bothered right. to look up because I may now, say things in my memoirs sure. that I don't. I understand. Names. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then by thirty-six or seven. Yeah. <coughs> we had twelve men. By thirty-six or thirty-seven, did you structure it as a group then, or did that come later in no. the forties? We call ourselves the Golden Plenty. Mm -hmm. When did you call yourselves the Golden Plenty? From the very day we started. Twenty-nine, 29 on. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Those men were all working, in a sense, for me. Mm -hmm. I was the boss. Mm -hmm. 
I tried to explain to them that my salary was the same as theirs. When we could make another dollar added on, we all got it. In those days, the pathologist was a guy who was down in the basement somewhere. The radiologist was in the gutter somewhere. With me, they got the same salaries. Everybody was as important as the elder fellow. Mm -hmm. This was a little startling to the AMA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which. Uh, Radiologists didn't have the status of the no. top income. You see, I was a radi. I've been a. I will be this June, maybe get a citation mm -hmm. for radiological service. Is I've been right? a radiologist since 1924. Is that right? As well yeah, as a surgeon. Yes. Yeah. So, <clears throat> in 1936 or 37, mm -hmm. I woke up, nobody complained, they, mm -hmm. they were going along, tickled to death to eat. Mm -hmm. we were well, the salary's still 300 a month? No, I think by that time it was 450 or maybe 500. Okay. I don't recall. Yeah, that. roughly, yeah. Yeah. I woke up to the fact, I wouldn't work here. Mm -hmm. Hell, I can get a pink slip tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. Why should these boys be interested? Mm -hmm. How can you get loyalty? So I called them together. Mm -hmm. And I said, boys, you looked upon me as the owner of this mm -hmm. thing. Well, there's no ownership in this mm -hmm. sense of the word. I've never cared what's on my door. It mm -hmm. didn't make any difference to me. I did care what I published. Mm -hmm. I did want to be known as a scientist. Mm -hmm. I was very that was close to my heart. Right. In 1932, I made the first spinal anesthesia picture made in the United States. One of the first made in an operating room mm -hmm. or anywhere. 1936, when color came out, I remade it. Mm -hmm. And it was used at the University of Pennsylvania for postgraduate teaching for mm -hmm. several years, I don't know how long. It went all over the world, I think, 12 different languages it was translated. Mm -hmm. and that's neither except to show that we scientifically... You were on top of things different. in Elkins, right? So well, I remember the pneumoconiosis conferences later, they were fantastic. No, that started in 1930. Yeah, in did they? I thought those 27. international ones. You began that interest that early? When I came here, mm -hmm. <coughs> within the first month or two, my father called me in his office and he said, Son, you're going to meet a new disease that you've never heard of, minor's asthma. It's one of the most pitiful things. These men will come in, you'll hear them breathing mm -hmm. before they ever get to the hospital. I don't know what to do for them, but I have a shotgun prescription. They say it helps them. Mm -hmm. I'm giving it to you. Mm -hmm. You can improve on it. You can mm -hmm. use it. Do what you What want. was it? What did he use? Bromide. High Siamis. And uh, one of the ammonia expectors. Mm -hmm. That was basically what it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm so that it loosened up the, the phlegm. phlegm and they could mm -hmm. spit it out. And with it, the exercise of laying on the foot of the bed, head down, mm -hmm. trying to drain the lung. Your modern treatment sure. for emphysema. Oh. This made him very close to the miners. Mm -hmm. The fact is, not so many months ago, I got a prescription a copy of a prescription written by my dad in 1893. Really? For minor asthma, yes. How was that? Some man brought him one yes, day. Sir. They wouldn't fill it at the drugstore anymore, and he won it. Wonderful. He's still alive. 1893. Huh? Yeah. In Elkins, he wrote a prescription, no, or was it when he was I don't know what yeah. it was. Terrific recall. story, yeah, for minor asthma. But <clears throat> in 1930, I guess, <clears throat> We had a chemist up at college, Davis Nelkins, mm -hmm. very brilliant man, name of Purdom. He later became president up there. Prior to World War, my entrance into World War I, which was only a student, mm -hmm. I had no real service. 
I got in with a Dr. Smythe, who was in the public health department of the city of Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. They were having some trouble out at Hog Island. Mm -hmm. The workers getting sick. He took a suitcase, <coughs> put a vacuum cleaner motor in it, and an outlet in one end, and we had bottles so that the heavy particles would drop into these bottles. And I went out there and mm -hmm. collected dust. This was an attempt to find out what, what was modern it? industrial yeah. medicine. Right. And then we went to the cement mills, and we put guinea pigs in the cement mills. Yeah. Then we took their lungs, yeah. and we desiccated them, mm -hmm. and weighed them. All right, this began to fit in to, about this time, I was invited to speak to a union rally of this whole area. Now, you're speaking of the 20s or the 30s, the 30s now? In the, the 30s, 30s now, 30s. okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They had a union rally All right. mm -hmm. for first aid. Yeah. And they had built this house, mm -hmm. which was nothing more than a board barn. And they filled it with coal dust and blew it up. Yeah. The coal dust explosion yeah. mm -hmm. thing that you sure. now know yeah. about. I began to put these things together. I wanted to see if Mr. Lewis would be interested. Give me some money to yeah. work it out. I went to Purdom and I said, if I get some money for some research, mm -hmm. would you cooperate? Yes, glad to. Mm -hmm. Not Tony T. Ty, I can't, Angelo somebody. Yeah. The, one of the organizers in District 31 you went to? He was an international yeah. organizer. Angelo somebody? Okay. Yes, I get it. All right. Mm -hmm. He made an appointment with John L. Lewis for me. This is the late 1930s, probably. Early 30s. Early 30s, all right. I had a 20-minute appointment mm -hmm. with Lewis. I went to see yeah. Lewis. Mm -hmm. I was in there two hours and a half. Mm -hmm. The tears ran down Mr. Lewis's face. Mm -hmm. You've never been in that room, so yeah, I, I I have known Mr. Great Lewis. Big yeah, room, very big, big yeah, desk right. at the end, yeah, and right. The chair. Mm -hmm. Mr. Lewis got out from behind the desk, yeah. came over, pulled a chair up yeah. beside me, and he cried like a baby. Now, what set that off? Your description, description of it, or his own discussion? Of miner's asthma, yeah. and would he help me with some money? Yeah, mm -hmm. he gave me five thousand dollars, and all the rest that I wanted. Mm -hmm. And this was the beginning of pneumoconiosis research. Now, you think this, if you had to place the date, is the 35? It's after he's organized under NRA. It's it's the big sweep has taken place. He's got the miners now. You know, yes. Brought them oh, yeah. together and united them. Yes. So it's it, maybe 1935 and that, around probably that Probably around there. Okay. Then I came back with my money and Perdon mm -hmm. was going to be president of the college. The hell with you. I'm not interested. And I never yeah. did. It died. It died. You never did no, try to carry out that did. pledge for never research. Never did. All right. But that's a wonderful but, precedent because... But, but Mr. Lewis mm -hmm. never forgot me. I'm sure of that. No, <laughs> never forgot And me. the welfare fund the relationships were uh, nurtured well, in their early course, stage for later. I, well, I was in on a lot of that. Mm -hmm. I would be called in for this, that, and the other. After the fund was founded in no, 46 was, and 8. A witness at the Boone uh, hearings, hearings. When, when Admiral Boone yes. came around. Did you uh, meet with Admiral Boone's people? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Where was that? In Washington? In Washington. Or? Fact is, he stated to me. Yeah. This is Admiral please, Boone? Yeah, please excuse mm -hmm. the ego. Yeah. But after our meeting, mm -hmm. he said, Thank God somebody gave me your name. Mm -hmm. You're the most direct. You're the most damnable. I don't know what you are, Golden, but thank God we had you. That's all. He was really depressed by some of the southern West Virginia and Kentucky things he saw, wasn't Well, it? I was... Mm -hmm. I had just had three months before that mm -hmm. a doctor from Morgantown who came in to see me, mm -hmm. complaining that I was doing too much for the miners and causing trouble. Mm -hmm. Dakota and some of the others had yeah. a applied to me for checkoff. All the way up into Marion County, right here. Oh, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. And the State Medical Society demanded I not do any of this. This is 1946 or so. And you had here a Dr. Waddell who was yeah. president. 
Yeah, you're right. I went to mm -hmm. a meeting of the mm -hmm. board, State mm -hmm. Medical Society, threatening a million dollar suit mm -hmm. with a lawyer and a secretary. And I gave them six weeks to come up with proof of what they were trying to do to me. When I got back, here is this note that Dakota wants me to come to a mine meeting. At two o'clock in the morning, I called up Waddell. Mm -hmm. Said, now by God, you tell them what you want. Or I will tell them mm -hmm. that you won't let me go. To meet with them on checkoff. That's yeah. what they want to do. So the State Medical Society got in a lot of hot water. Now that was the 40s by then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so they've never had any use for me since. Yeah. And but I, you had clashed with them earlier in the 30s, oh, and yeah. the clash continued well, I was into say, the 40s. <clears throat> Going back to this farm business, mm -hmm. when I was president of the hospital association, I had the meeting in Elkins. Mm -hmm. <coughs> a Dr. Hogue was president of the State Medical Society and Ray, urologist down mm -hmm. in Huntington, I can't think of his name. Mm -hmm. They were uh, the medical society people yeah, when you were the head of They came to the meeting that night after the bank. I invited mm -hmm. him over to the house for a nightcap. Mm -hmm. And I told him my you plan. You were meeting in Elkins. For yeah, I told him my plan. That I was going to, that I... Go in a, with this farm. I program. bought a farm. Yeah. I had bought a Ford. Mm -hmm. I had a man who had been a mm -hmm. miner. Yeah. Who knew all about the checkoff. Mm -hmm. And he was going to be mm -hmm. the salesman yeah. to get these people. Yeah. Fine. It's a wonderful idea. Golden, will it pay? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Something has to be done. I'm getting nothing now. Yeah. I can't stay open. Yeah, right. Every a way to support helps. the hospital. Sure. Yeah, every dollar. You see, the hospital got 60 cents out of every dollar we took. And, the, and the clinic took 40. Was that That's it? Right. A 60-40 budget? That's right. Okay. By our own decision. Yes. Mm -hmm. This was automatic. You'd break apart the dollars right. and bookkeep them separately. Either Ray, I can't remember, mm -hmm. or Hope said, well, we'd like to have some figures on this thing. I said, well, who in the hell is going to pay for them? Mm -hmm. You hire mm -hmm. a secretary, yeah. and we'll pay her bill. Now, remember this. Four months or six months later, I'm announced <laughs> in the state medical journal You're on that I'm soliciting, and therefore, the next meeting I will be out sure. of the state medical system. So this must have been around 1931, as I remember, the, yes, uh, something in that area that you were brought up on charges. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. Mm -hmm. But this was over rural and farm that this came up, as well as Nobody coal mines. Nobody in yeah. town. It was all rural and farm. Yeah. And you'd been solicited, actually, by the Federals who were concerned at this point. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this was your first Blue Cross. <laughs> In West Virginia, certainly. Yes. It was an effort at prepaying these terribly high hospital and doctor costs when people were hospitalized. And they, but people were losing their farms. It they was were an effort about. to get something. Yeah. Tucker County, mm -hmm. which is Parsons, Davis, 90% at one time of their people were on relief. Right. And by a, a visit from the county court, mm -hmm. I took care of all of their sick people. There was no doctor there, mm -hmm. no uh, hospital. Right. I took care of all of their hospital work with the promise. Through this device of the. No, through the, no oh, device. Oh. Before this was oh, coming out. This was out, a promise from the court to. Just to help poor people. Mm -hmm. We weren't. Money yeah. wasn't involved. Yeah. It was a question of. God, we Doctors people. weren't thinking of being wealthy people then. They were more dedicated, no, no, you think, no, no, and on the average? That's right. They, they remembered their oath more. That's right. I think it's been forgotten, don't you, a little more today? I don't think, I know. <laughs> it's pitiful today. And I'm blaming the government for a hell of a lot of it. Why? Extra funding and... Because, oh, yeah. well, I take this goddamn medical school here. Mm -hmm. It's nothing more than a research institution to keep...
Morning, Tom. He left Hawaii. I think it's what the best time. Well, the way he went, I didn't know whether he'd come back or not. Oh, yeah. We're doing some small stuff. Well, you take care. I'll see you. Let me. I know you're not going to deal with all these matters here, but prior to sleeping. You were saying that the principal problems, what were the two categories of reasons that the miners and the uh, lumber workers... Typhoid and trauma. Typhoid and trauma were the key. <laughs> And therefore, your father's concerns were to get into the coal camps, GPs, and he dealt with the companies to get this done. That's right. There they went whole hard. No problem there. Yeah. And you think by the time you came back, say 1922 or so, yeah. that was generally achieved, or was oh, yeah. it still working? Mm, that was achieved. Mm -hmm. The only thing where, was, where were those? I mean, give me some examples of anyone you remember. Who were some of those GPs and in what camps were they? I don't know that I can... Uh, you any of them? The names of any of them. Uh, you mentioned Hull down in Pocahontas County. Uh, is there any... No. Any closer There's people? There's no Hull in Pocahontas. Hull. In but, Durban. Uh, that was longer and That was older, huh? Yeah. But Norton, Junior, Dartmoor, all had the Scott people. Run mm -hmm. here, okay. Morgantown, Ben Pride, look at the crowd here in Morgantown. Pride was a... All those boys got... <laughs> began and started. Yeah. GPs, mm -hmm. GPs with check -off. In fact, yeah. the associate dean of the School of Medicine, you know, uh, Dave Morgan began as a Chekhov doctor as late so as 1950. So huh? Dyer. N. H. Dyer. Mm -hmm. Where was he? Do you remember? Uh, southern part of the state somewhere? Go over the higher river, I think. Mm -hmm. they, they don't like to remember. <laughs> they don't like to talk about it. No. They're a little ashamed of these origins. They're connected with prepayments, you think? Yes, I think they are, in a sense. Because, you see, they fought a battle mm -hmm. and lost. Mm -hmm. And when you lose a battle, you don't like to talk about it. When you win a battle, then you have a lot to talk about. You want to push that ashtray towards me a little bit, please? All right, so that all over the place are doctors who were a part of prepaid coal mine activity. Directly or indirectly. I mean, when I learned that half the doctors in Charleston were getting $50 a month to come in every other day or once a week and see the contract patients. When did you learn that? What period was that? Oh, I didn't learn that till no, we won't charge you. Yeah, okay. 38, 39, I guess. They're trying to tell me now. Is she still fun? Is she still fun? She's still fun. No, she's not fun anymore. They're trying to tell me they think maybe she's got I was very naive in a lot of this. Oh. Oddly enough. And I was naive because I wasn't looking for things. Mm -hmm. I had no interest in this stuff. <laughs> what I wanted to do was do medicine. That's why I stayed here. Have you had enough to eat? Oh, yes. If you had, we'll remove this stuff. Yes, I'm off. We'll set that up. No, thanks. He says, this lunch for many years has been a peanut butter sandwich. My lunch for both through high school. <laughs> Forty-five years I had. That's what I was at the high school when I when I traveled the subway in New York, from Brooklyn to Manhattan. <laughs> Do you know I went one year to public school, 184 in New York. 
That's where I grew up. At the 116th Street, Street East. Yeah. East there's, there's, well, East. There, there was, wasn't a black boy in the whole territory. Yeah, that. it's on the other side of CCNY. Across yeah. The park. yeah. Well, that was Columbia. Columbia. Yeah, across yeah. the park. Down the hill and over the park. Where the Ellis, where the subway comes out yeah. of the Yeah, across Morningside. Right. I was in New York when they dug the first piece of dirt for New York subway. <laughs> You want to keep your coat? Mm -hmm. Okay. And you through with it? Yes. Just clear it away just to give you yes. clear view. I'm going to make it a little easy by getting this away, which is crazy. Where did I pick up my folder? Oh, I'll, did I I'll get there it. Did I get there and say this? This could be it or I'll get yeah, it. Yeah, that's it. On your desk. Is okay. that it? Here it is. Here it is. This is it. This is it. Uh -huh. The evidence which is brought yeah. forth. Okay.